Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 25, San Diego Comic-Con special. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my beautiful and entertaining co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hello, love. So this week is a double episode week. It just feels like we... Did episode twenty four? We, we were just here for episode twenty four. <laughs> uh, we just we had too much to uh, to talk about for San Diego Comic Con that right. we had to break it into a separate episode. Yeah. So without further ado, shall we get right into it? Sure, let's do it. So we have a boatload of information came out on Marvel. Uh, and their phase four plans. Why don't you take us into that? Sure. So obviously I think the, the biggest takeaway, um, was phase four being released, but also how much, how crucial Disney plus their streaming service was actually going to play as, as part of this as well. Um, so it was last Saturday that the presentation was done and, what they basically said was that the Marvel TV series would share the same worlds of the cinematic universe, but it basically made it clear that Disney plus having a subscription was really kind of going to, was going to be essential for keeping current on the different narratives of what you were going to see in the theater. Right. Um, So as an example, when Dr. Strange uh, in the multiverse of madness hits in May of 2021, you'll see Dr. Strange. He'll be joined by fellow Avenger Scarlet Witch. But to understand how she got there, you're going to need to watch the Disney Plus original WandaVision, which is going to be coming out spring of 2020. So it's kind of like, all right, well, if you want to see the movie, you need to at least watch this first or know about it to understand what what is happening. Um, then likewise, uh, if you're going to want to watch the new show about Loki, you're going to need to rewatch Avengers Endgame for a blink and miss moment that explains Loki's return after his demise in Infinity Wars. Um, then you have Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming uh, another series coming um, where they're basically taking on um, the villain from Captain America Civil War. Then, of course, you have um, Hawkeye, who's going to be doing a standalone film, be, uh, a standalone series, actually, which is based with um, his family um, and the saga of, of how that uh, moves on. Um, then obviously there's the different theatrical release releases that they talked about. So you have Black Panther, you have Captain Marvel, Gardens of the Ga- Galaxy, which are all part of the next eight films dated through 2022. Um, and then they threw in some unusual uh, aspects. Um, so there's um, the Internals. Um, which is a trippy Jack Kirby comic series about a 35,000 year old alien, uh, alien beings. So it's, you know, something kind of different that Marvel hasn't done. Um, Selma Hayek is actually going to be the lead in that. Um, first time for a Hispanic woman to be the lead of a, a Marvel uh, movie. Very cool. Um, and one of the things that kind of, everybody got all excited about was um, Angelina Jolie 
was announced as a final member of the cast. Yeah. So everybody, when she came out, uh, everybody, you know, went crazy. And, you know, she said how excited she was to, to be there. Um, and that is currently slated for uh, 2020, uh, November. Um, so then you have, you know, again, you have the, um, the Doctor Strange stuff. And as I think we had mentioned it before, um, that they're looking at doing it as a darker movie where it's actually going to be kind of the first horror movie yeah, from the yeah. MCU. So that's kind of kind of interesting and different. And that'll be May 2021. Um, then they have the Shang-Chi um, and the Legends of the Ten Rings, which, again, is another on you know, on brand Marvel offering, um, that's of the Asian, uh, characters. And again, something new that, you know. And we'll actually finally get to see the real Mandarin, not the Mandarin from Iron Man 3. Right, right. So, you know, so that'll, so you have, you know, that whole thing. And then of course they did, you know, bring out their, their normal, uh, uh, Marvel celebrities during the, the presentation. So Scarlett Johansson came out obviously talking about Black Widow and her series, which uh, they're saying is is the prequel, obviously. And they were saying it was kind of going to be like the Bourne, the Jason Bourne uh, series yeah, of movies. Yeah. It was kind of going to have that feel to it. Um, Chris Helmsworth will be returning in the fourth Thor titled Love and Thunder. Um, and... Natalie Portman is going to be back playing the female version of Thor. So that got a, a big, you know, round of applause that she was going to be back. Well, and that was actually kind of surprising considering mm -hmm. when, when she departed the Marvel universe, uh, she had kind of left on bad terms. Mm, okay. Uh, she had, she had basically bad mouthed the company and how it was treating its talent and stuff okay. like that. Uh, <clears throat> so it was kind of strange to actually see, like, if, if you're going to follow the comics, um, you have to have that character mm -hmm. take over as Thor. Right. But it was kind of interesting that they brought the actors back in to play the character. Right, because in so many cases they bring in, you know, replacements and, and right. from time right. to time. And you're also going to see... Um, uh, who was Val uh, Valkyrie? Uh, uh, Tessa Thompson. Yes, who was going to take on the first LGBT character right. in a Marvel mm -hmm. uh, series, too, yeah. which was a, a great breakthrough. Yeah, so that's really cool. Um, and then in, you know, the final thing that they kind of revealed of, of the day was that Oscar winner Mahershala, Mahershala Ali was going to be joining the family of Marvel characters in the reboot of Blade. Um, so that was kind of big exciting news because I guess they've been kind of hinting about Blade being redone right. um, but not really talking a whole lot of, about it um, and then um, the president of, of Marvel also alluded yeah. um, saying that because of now Disney acquiring 20th Century Fox that now Fantastic Four and the mutants of X-Men are going to finally be able to join the Marvel family, you know, since they've been kind of and, separated. You know, I heard that and I couldn't help but wonder, oh, great, they're going to reboot <laughs> X-Men again. Right. That's basically been rebooted twice now, three right. times Right, I've now. lost track of how many times. You know, they've rebooted Fantastic Four twice. They've uh -huh. rebooted X-Men twice. Right. And they've done, you know, offshoots of... of right, with X-Men, I really don't see you having to... To reboot it, you no. know, it's it's kind of well and has they, with, its own following. With, with X Men First Class, they rebooted it and they and they sort of set the timeline back, right? So that you have the younger cast right. versus the older, you know, but the, the older one. The trouble they're going to have there is who's going to replace Hugh Jackman as as Wolverine? You can't. You, you can't. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, it's it's just he, he is Wolverine. Good, yeah. Good luck trying to replace him. Yeah. In that so. Role. So it'll be interesting to see. So, you know, they, they definitely, you know, put a, a lot out there. Um, you know, again, you know, it, it, it's it's setting the stage for Disney Plus, 
obviously. You know, it's not just going to be, hey, we got some cool, you know, uh, shows that are going to be playing. It's now, well, if you're going to want to go see this next thing and understand what happened, you know, you're going to... Well, and that's the thing that concerns me is that they're placing a dependency on mm-hmm. this, subs- this subscription service. Right. Which... It's Disney, and you know they're going to take advantage of it. (laughs) So they they're coming out with it as what six bucks or seven bucks. Seven dollars, yeah. Right, so it's seven dollars to start until the movies come out, and then they're going to they're going to start creeping that price up every year. And in order to to stay in tune with the shows, the movies that you want to watch. You, they're basically going to extort you into paying for the service now. Or you you don't do it and you find somebody that wrote did a write up online or did a podcast online, wink wink nudge nudge, and you know, and you do it that way, and then you don't have to spend your twelve dollars a yeah, month. I mean, there's certainly ways around it, but mm-hmm. I look at how they had the tie-ins between. Uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. and the Avengers series. Right. And the earlier seasons where you saw direct tie-ins with the first Avengers movie, then you saw it with um, Winter Soldier, with the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that. Okay, right. And they were done in such a way that if you didn't watch the series, the movies made sense. Right. And if you didn't watch the movies... The series had enough narrative in them so that yeah. they were they yeah. stood independent mm-hmm. of each yeah. other. Yeah, you didn't need to watch <clears throat> both to to understand. And, no, it, I and get it, it sounds like they're going to go a different direction well, now to we'll to generate that dependency on the on the subscription service. Mm-hmm. So very cool. So mm-hmm. I think we'll move on to our winners and losers. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. So who are our big winners that came out of San Diego Comic-Con? So one of the articles that I found, um, basically, you know, there's so much that goes on at Comic-Con that, you know, you could take a whole week just to, you know, digest it all. Um, So this was one that just kind of like had a a short list. Um, So their top winner was The Expanse, which, of course... Yay! <laughs> I knew that would be something uh, that you would uh, you would love. Um, so basically, this was where um, the expanse really didn't have a presence last year at Comic Con because they really didn't know what was going on with them. Now, you know, they have a new home. Amazon Prime, you know, picked them up. So now there was so much stuff coming out about it. Um, the new trailer got released, which. I haven't seen it. I have to watch it. Okay. Well, I didn't know if we wanted to watch it, but that's fine. We can watch it, you know, when we're done. Um, and, you know, kind of gives you a little bit of a taste of, of, of what it's like. And obviously, with the trailer, we got the release date of the new series, which is December 13th. So not that far away um, at all. Um, and what was cool was there were other things that came out um different things you know from the cast and the crew and you know it kind of has a a different feel to it because the previous seasons were based upon you know the residents of earth and mars and the belt and and the tensions between them now it's um you know they're they're on new terra and the whole colonizing of of that and the the problems that uh that are occurring and and the conflict so you know it's it's a lot of the same but you know kind of different and just everybody was just so excited to to be back um so they were they were definitely one of the things uh that a lot of people do we want to watch it if you want to watch it it's entirely up to you i know you want to watch it do we have it here in the link I think so. It's uh, somewhere. I think this is it here. Hang okay. On. Yeah, that's it. What did you see out there? 
It's hard to put into words. Whatever happens, we'll deal with it together. Holy shit. That answers your question. Okay, well, potty mouth there. Gee, <laughs> well, I, know that. I, meant, I meant to warn you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a heads up on that one, but okay. Sorry, I forgot. Um, but one of the interesting articles talked about how, you know, again, they're trying to stay very true to the the books. Um, well, and, and, and having read the books and seen those scenes, the, it there makes was, sense to there you. There was a lot of things that were in the book there that makes sense. Okay, well, that's good because I didn't read anything. But that was one of the things that they kind of brought up uh, during one of the panels, not saying it, but kind of alluding to it. Because of the whole Game of Thrones thing. Now, we aren't fans of Game of Thrones. We never watched it. But from what I had heard that, you know, the the finale and, you know, what was in the books and what was in the show, you know, at the end was very different. And you had fans that were very upset. So they kind of alluded, hey, is it going to be like the books? And they said, yes, we're trying to stay as true to it. But what was interesting was the character of Bobby, the Martian, she's actually not in the third book she's at not. all, but she is in the third season, and they they wrote her in, and they were saying that, you know, they obviously took liberties and, and kind of figured out how to kind of put her in as Bobby the Martian and not Barbie, uh, uh, Bobby the the Marine. You know, she, she has a more humanistic... Well, and that's Quality interesting because in, this in the season. next book, that's how she's portrayed. Right. So I guess it's kind of like a prequel to. Right. So they're they're bringing her in earlier, but they're bringing her in. It seems like in the same context that she was in mm -hmm. to provide. And, I, and I'm curious how she's going to interact with the crew mm -hmm. uh, because it's the the book itself um, had very clear lines of delineation with the crew because the crew wind up being geographically separated for the duration of the book. Okay. So I'm curious who she winds up with okay. and how she influences okay. that. Interesting. So yeah, so that was definitely a, a top winner. Uh, another winner was a Netflix TV show called The Witcher, um, which I believe is... Is it based on the game? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I uh, basically they said, uh, you know, from previews, they weren't really quite sure because um, uh, Henry Cavill is wearing like this this wig that makes him kind of look silly. Oh, wait, he's but, Superman. He can't. I know. He can't well, he, he's movie. in this, um, you know, but they said once they actually saw the trailer for that, it looked badass and like it was better than they expected you know, had hoped uh, for it. Um, then it seemed like um, horror finally was, was coming into its own as well because there are two Halloween movies that are coming that um, from the reboot of the Halloween series and they're kind of like back-to-back -back movies. Okay. So that was a big thing. Um, there was a, a panel uh, that was done that focused on like special effects so that had like a, a big following, and plus you have Blade coming out, which that's, you know, there's your horror movie, you know, right there. Um, then, of course, they were excited about, as we had mentioned with the Marvel uh, stuff, you know, the uh, a lot of the, um, the heavyweights are, are coming back, and, you know, Natalie Portman, and then you have, you know, Blade and... and you know, that whole aspect was, was a very positive. 
And then their next thing that they were definitely seeing as a winner was Star Trek. Yeah. Um, they had a whole bunch of different Star Trek things coming out. And one of you know the coolest things that people got excited about was Star Trek Picard. Yep. Um, and that looks that looks good so and, far. And that you know when that trailer came out, it was like what you know that was just cool. And the different cameos you know by original cast members from Star Trek Generation and yep. and uh, you know and and that uh, error of of Star Trek was just. Very cool. Um, and again, that's on CBS All Access, so that's another, you which, know... Which we don't subscribe which to. Which we don't, and it's like, oh, now what do we do? <laughs> well, And I won't just for Star Trek. Right, right. Because I totally disagree with the route that they went with it. Right, exactly. But, you know, so if anybody has it and, you know, you're, you're into it, let us know how it is because it looks, looks really good. Um and then, of course, you know, there were the losers where, you know, Game of Thrones, there was a, a bunch of stuff that I guess they had a couple of panels that they were supposed to have and things didn't go right oh. with it. Um, then I guess Watchmen. Well, got, and the one thing that I, I saw was that the the panel that they did have, the one they didn't have was the writer's panel. Mm -hmm. And it was, there was a scheduling conflict. They did have a panel with some of the actors. Mm-hmm. And they booed the actors mm. because they were fans were upset over right. the show. And really, it's not the show. Right. It's not the actors who who. No, it. it's not. It it would it, be it the was, writers and. Well, and it was the writers for reasons outside of your typical reason. Right. It wasn't that they didn't do a good job. They, first of all, they cut the season in half. Right. Because there was another project that the writers were going to work on, mm -hmm. so they wanted to get it over with. Right. Plus. They had gotten ahead of the books. Mm -hmm. They now they had worked hand in hand with uh, uh, was it George R. R. Martin, mm -hmm. the author, right? Um, and they they got a feeling from him on how things were supposed to go, and they tried to you know keep that in the script, right? Right. But they didn't have the books as a guide, and and they rushed through it, mm -hmm. and apparently it had the effect. You know, yeah. There were how many seasons of. Game of Thrones and five seasons or eight seasons or whatever, right? Leading up to this big climax that, that was completed in two episodes, right? Right. Uh, so a lot of people felt cheated and mm -hmm. justifiably so. But you know, when the writers didn't show up to answer for that, right. they wound up taking their ire out on the cast, on somebody else, which was unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so another was it looked like um, the Watchmen was actually supposed to be a big anticipation um hbo is doing an, um uh the hbo max new service and so this was going to be a new series on it basically hoping to pick up where game of thrones kind of left off and that you know they said while well, the trailer looked great none of the cast or the crew were there and it just kind of was like eh, yeah here it is hope you watch it um Another thing that they were talking about was that um, it was San Diego Comic-Con's 50th anniversary, but yet really not much talk about it. You right. know, like you would have thought, oh, my God, it's the 50th. We, you know, do something big and, you know, over the top. And really, there wasn't anything. It was like, oh, by the way, it's our 50th anniversary type thing. Um, then there were a couple of other uh, uh shows where um that you know are getting ready to end uh one of the cw shows arrow um and they kind of had you know also another little eh type you know th thing where people were like oh this is going to be the last season gonna kind of come out with a bang and they kind of didn't we're on the reverse um agents of shield who they're currently in season seven they're going to be doing one more season eight, but this was basically their last Comic Con, and they kind of went out with a bang. So it's right. like you have, you know, one show that does it right, and then right, you had this right. other one that was just kind of like. Eh. So we can't talk Comic Con losers without talking cats. <laughs> and this was definitely the 
most disturbing the video most I think I've ever seen. Disturbing the most. Like, people that were there were kind of like, why is this? Even it, it, it was so bad, it almost looked like it was a parody video. Yeah, it really did. And I was kind of disappointed because a couple days before the actual trailer dropped, they dropped a making of trailer. Um, so you got to see the different cast members being interviewed, just quick little right. interview bites. You got to see the dancers performing, and you got to see, you know, it, it was the raw footage of everything. And then you're like, oh, my God, that that looks good. You got, you know, Jennifer Hudson, and you got um, Taylor Swift, and you got this one, and you got this one, and, oh, wow, this is really going to look cool. And, you know, you didn't really see a lot of the background. You know, again, yeah. it was it was all rehearsal-type stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be cool. And then you hear that the cast is going to be CGI kind of to look like cats. Yeah. And you're like... What? And then the trailer drops. And you come to the conclusion and that you're like, just because you can do something technologically doesn't mean you should. And it's the creepiest looking yeah. thing ever. <laughs> like, the sets look beautiful. I think they look... Now, I saw Cats... 30 something years ago yeah almost 30 years ago now that that on was Broadway. one of the, that was one of the big questions that came out of this is this based on the musical or is this some kind of offshoot cuz they never really answered that no i think it i think it's based off of well the musical itself is based off of ts Eliot's writings right and it's like kind of short stories and you know so it's individual little stories kind of put together you know each cat kind of has a little thing and some some of the cats intertwine some of them don't intertwine. I and like what you did there <laughs> i didn't even i didn't even plan it that's how <laughs> awesome i am um that's how entertaining i am um so you know so some of the songs sounded familiar when I, okay. you know, I saw the the trailer. Um, but again, you're talking about a Broadway show that, you know, only has one stage and it really didn't change the set all that much where here you have, you know, the cats walking the alley and they go into some, you know, a house and, you know, and it was interesting because everything's to, to you know, to scale. So the actors are the height of what cats are. So, you know, the door is, you right. know, much bigger and that looked really cool. But the fact that all the people are, their faces yeah. are CGI'd and their fur is CGI'd, that's just... It, like, what's the value of I getting... Don't know. A Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. if you're going to stick CGI over top of her, and you're, she's not even going to be recognizable because she was not at all recognizable. Right now, some some of the characters they were, they did look, you know, like their character. But again, you know, why not just put them in a costume? Because exactly. that was what was good enough for Broadway. So it was just. It was not. You it had was to. Not a good you effect. watched it just because it was a train wreck, really. You know. So I'm sure people are going to go to see it because of the music of because it. Because people like to watch. They can't help but look at car yeah, wrecks on the road. Yeah, that's true, too. Um, you know, but if it's something where, you know, you can't get to Broadway, you've never been able to get to Broadway, and you want to see a, a Broadway show. Of a bunch of fairy mutants on TV yeah, or on the screen. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's... It was just very, very odd, and like I said, and and like we, you know, we talked about everybody that it was like, why is this here? It yeah. just doesn't seem, <laughs> seem normal. So yes, yeah, so that was like the top highlights of uh, um, of uh, uh, the show overall. Um, then another link that we'll we'll obviously share was. Um, it was the handy dandy list of everything in one place. Um, and it was links, you know, it had it broken down um, by television. Um, and again, it, it talked about, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like we just said, and how, um, you know, they had an emotional panel, you know, basically, you know, they knew the end was 
was near, you know, that they were only doing one more season afterwards, you know, so they had a couple of different stories about that. Um, then it talked about, you know, um, some things that, you know, weren't as positive where, you know, like the new Batwoman, you know, they're not really, it that didn't really seem to have a, a, a very positive feel to it yet. They're kind of like, eh, it was kind of mediocre. Um, and then obviously, uh, well, and I think the thing with the bat, the whole thing with Batwoman, which is unfortunate was so much emphasis was put on, you know, her, her gender identity and, and, right. and her sexual preference that it's completely overshadowed anything right. else with the show at this point. Right. And it didn't need to be, it right. could have just been, you know, like let the show happen and then have it, you know, right. Show or up. let it show up in the show and let right. it let it let, let it, it become a part of let the it show. Be, you know, and show me how it's relevant in the course right. of the storytelling. Right. Um, you know, so they had that. Then obviously, you know, Marvel with Disney Plus. Uh, then they had, you know, The Flash with season six. Then you had um, uh, Justice League or Young Justice coming out so you had you know some animated uh information then supergirl changes coming with n new cast for their fifth season um then they had a whole section of just the science fiction and fantasy so a whole bunch of different things popping up on the expanse um because again everybody was just so excited about that then things about west westworld um then uh, the Witcher, like we had talked about, um, Dark Crystal, Age of the Resistance, which will be coming uh, to Netflix uh, from the Jim Henson Company. So there were a bunch of different things um, about that. Then we had, uh, again, there were a couple of different things, you know, about Game of Thrones and <laughs> what happened or didn't happen that should have happened at Comic Con. Um, Preacher, uh, another, uh, they had the trailer for that, which is going to be in its final season as well. Then again, a whole bunch of Star Trek uh, stuff that, that came out between the, the Picard trailer and then some other little shorts that they're going to do. Um, the new trailer for um, Walking Dead was premiered also, and, you know, where how that's going to kind of change uh, the there new was, season. Wasn't there talk about the uh, Rick Grimes movie and, as right, well? The, the movie, <coughs> excuse me, the new movie um, and, and what direction, you know, that was taking. Obviously what we talked about uh, in our earlier podcast about the Orville moving to Hulu. So, uh, you know, they talk about uh, that here, uh, Dark Crystal, um, did I say Dark Crystal you mentioned before? Dark Crystal, I did. Because yeah. <laughs> again, so, they they kind of list like so all of this, everything and anything. All of the summary is hosted up on Gizmodo. Mm -hmm. So we'll have the link in the show notes and in the credits for the show here. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're interested in digging into more detail on any of that stuff, we'll make that information available. Okay. And I think that was all we had, which, again, was another 30 minutes of content, which I'm <laughs> glad we didn't try and cram into the last podcast. See, I told you. <laughs> uh, so we'll be back next week with our regularly scheduled podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, you can check this one out and episode 24. Both should be going live Monday at 8. We'll be streaming, the, streaming them on Twitch tomorrow night. Um Check it out on the website at www.insightsintothings.com. Uh, where can they hit us on Facebook? Uh, Facebook.com backslash uh, Insights Into Things podcast. And you can get the audio versions at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. And I think that's everything. That is it. Another one in the books. All righty. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to everyone next week. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.